Good evening and welcome to another of Tim's Tech Talk videos here at Venom Motorsports Canada. So today we're having a look at multimeters and what we can do with a multimeter to perform some basic checks. So firstly, let's have a look at the multimeter that we're going to be using today. Uh, this was purchased at Canadian Tire in Canada, which is kind of similar to AutoZone and only costs twenty dollars so this is an amazing meter for twenty bucks that is crazy and what are the things that it can check for us it'll be able to check our voltage so V with this sort of straightish looking line is a DC voltage which is what we're interested in because we have DC voltage direct current voltage running through our bikes over here you'll notice the V with the squiggly line. <clears throat> this is for AC voltage that you would find in your home. So we're not going to use that. But we're going to be focusing on the DC voltage. As well we're going to be having a look at resistance. And the concept of continuity which will help us check a variety of devices on our bikes. And in order to utilize this the first thing we do is install the battery. Install our cables and we're pretty much good to go. The things that I want you to be aware of when people are talking about electrical circuits in your bike is that every single circuit in your bike basically boils down to this. So when you have a look at this little quick diagram, you're going to notice that we have a 12 volt DC source of power. We have a completed circuit. We have a switch to control the flow. Of electricity to in this case the light which is the load and we must have wiring right down here that you can see is a completed path so in order for any electrical circuit to work you have to have a source of power you must have a switch in order to control the flow of that power you need to have a load which is the thing that's going to be doing the work for you for example this could be a light it could also be your starter motor and then you must have a completed path that is to say you must have wires going from one side of the circuit to the other and have a completed path of flow really important that we have all three of these in place so a source of power a completed path and a load otherwise the circuit will not work and this is true for any DC electrical circuit found in your bike so in terms of testing, one of the things we like to start with is, of course, voltage. Because we're concerned with the amount of voltage that we have available. Your bike is designed to produce a little over 12 volts via the charging circuit. And the charging circuit will feed into a battery. Now you'll notice this battery here is quite a monster compared to the one in your bike. That's because this is a marine-based battery that I pulled out of my boat for this experiment. And the reason I want to show you this is it's really important. So the very first thing we want to have a look at is, okay, so how do we connect these wires up? The black wire for reading voltage always connects to the negative terminal on the battery. And again, I'm doing this one-handed, so it's a little bit tricky. So we've connected the negative side to the battery terminal, black to negative, red to positive. And this is a large battery that has a very high capacity. And it's basically brand new, so it was purchased in the spring. So I expect this battery will have no problems at all, and I know it's performed well for me throughout the fishing season. However, it's been sitting idle for almost a month and a half in a cold garage. And what happens to batteries under those conditions? They begin to lose their charge. Now, with the terminals connected up, just like you see here, positive, negative, the voltmeter said to read up to 20 volts. I should, and I'm hoping to see, 12 volts. But what do I read? 5.45 volts. How can that be? Well, again, this battery has been sitting for more than a month and a half. No charge. It's done no work in that time. It's been sitting in a cold garage outside. The evenings are getting cold here in Ottawa, Canada. 
And what happens to batteries is, if they just sit idle over time, they will lose their charge and the charge will dissipate. You will notice this exact same effect after you store your battery for the winter months. So before you panic and assume that your battery is no good, put a charger on the battery, let it charge up overnight, and it'll go right back up to 12 volts and be perfectly fine once again. But this is a very important test because a battery with 5.54 volts will never start your bike. The voltage is too low to hold the starting relay contacts in place so the bike will not start. If you were, for example, to turn on the ignition switch, then hit the start switch, nothing would happen. You might hear a little bzzz out of the starting relay, but that's it. So as you can see, having a voltmeter and being able to read the actual voltage that you get from your battery is a very important piece of information in terms of troubleshooting. So again, highly encourage you to buy yourself a voltmeter so that you're able to take a volt reading from your battery. Now, what's another very helpful thing you can do with a voltmeter? You can change the settings over to this area here and you'll see there's a little indicator of a speaker. And this is the area of resistance. So basically, if you have the leads for the meter apart, there is no continuity, no path of flow. And the meter would read one or infinite resistance. If you then attach the two of these probes together and make a connection, you'll notice that the resistance drops are right down to zero. And with this meter, you can hear that annoying sound, which is a built-in speaker that tells you you have continuity. This is really awesome as a testing mechanism. And the reason is, open circuit and again closed circuit so if we can use that for testing it allows us to see if fuses for example are still operational so if you look inside the fuse you can see right there that there's a fusible link between the two contacts and if we apply the meter probes from one side to the other you'll see that we will indeed get a buzzing sound because continuity is going to run through. We're going to send current through one side of the fuse and then out the other. So this is an excellent tool then for checking your main fuse to ensure that it is still functional. And again, $20 meter that you can buy a Canadian Tire or AutoZone. Multimeters are extremely handy for troubleshooting and we'll be using this same device to show you other examples of troubleshooting as we go by. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have yourselves a great day and enjoy the ride, my friends. Bye-bye.